A low-rent, black-and-white, moronic feminist would tell you that Swallow is a film with misogyny as its villain. How it's a social commentary on all the evil shit men do, cause patriarchy, utterly convinced in their victimhood-bent sensibilities, that they understood its themes and messages completely, simply because it fits so neatly in line with their own agendas and worldview. For anyone who's been in a fucking relationship before, however, especially one that tilted on the side of toxic, it should be quite clear that being emotionally manipulated and coerced into a role the other person wants you to be is something we've all experienced to one degree or another. Gender has fuck all to do with it. This isn't to say that the misogynistic doesn't play a role in the film, only slapping it with such buzzwords does it a great disservice, given its delicate, or perhaps delicacy, of a theme, its main flavour being the loss of control. In Swallow, this loss of control, or complete lack thereof, isn't solely down to the oppressive relationship our lead girl finds herself in, but one she was naturally drawn to because of the relationship she has with herself to begin with. In essence, we often get into the wrong relationships for the right reasons. People don't like hearing it, I guess, since it doesn't shine a particularly good light on our subconscious behaviour, but every single relationship we've ever got into is the right relationship for who we are at whatever moment we embarked upon it. There's an element of responsibility one has to take for one's actions, even when we're surprised by the people our significant others bring out in us, and vice versa. I guess the biggest trouble is acknowledging, whether knowingly so or not, full of abuse or tender love and care, that no matter the type of relationship we've ever found ourselves in, is one that we fucking ask for. Through sickness or in health. Truth, as it happens, is a difficult thing to swallow. Ahem. Carlo Mirabella Davis's 2019 Swallow follows Hunter Conrad shortly after giving her wedding vows to the wealthy Richie Conrad, a Nepo baby set to become CEO of his father's corporation. All seems to be going swimmingly for the young woman, only the doors her hypergamy has opened are about to be slammed shut for good. Having walked into an emotionless ivory tower, her increasing isolation leads to her not only begin to lose her marbles, but start gobbling them up as if they're Ferrero Rochers. Going trick-or-treating at this bitch's house will fuck up your teeth on a whole different spectrum. Hey, even the Mona Lisa's falling apart. This also occurs just to add to the stomach-churning element soon after we learn she's eating for two. The pinkish hues gorgeously peppered about the abode, symbolising the inner workings of her womb, bring to mind Charlotte Perkin Gilman's The Yellow Wallpaper, a short story about a woman suffering from what is now known as postnatal depression, who slowly loses her mind due to being confined within the four walls with nothing to stimulate her, forcing her to pen her thoughts in paranoid secrecy. <coughs> Instead of shadow-figured imaginings coming to life inside the wallpaper, Hunter develops a predilection for consuming inanimate objects known as Pica Disorder. As her disillusionment and alienation cements itself, You'd imagine if she stumbled upon the key to her prison, she'd see it more as a meal than a ticket to her freedom. Rather than said, we're shown just how alone she is through picture-perfect shots not far removed from paintings you might find on a well-to-do wall. This early take here, for example, occurs shortly after Hunter tells Richie she's pregnant, where he looms like a shadow in the background, a lurking stranger who's now inside her womb where the anguished hunter is somewhat alert, but not fully aware of the glaring red danger bubbling around her, sucking her in. As the movie progresses, Hunter's more like a surrogate mother for her own child, a walking human incubator or egg's nest, trapping her within the confines of her picture-perfect home and housewife magazine clothes to the entrapment of her body and now even womb as if born into the life of a Russian doll with no hope of escape, except through the consumption of eating things she biologically shouldn't. The attributable perversity to Pica disorder is all the more unsettling to the viewer because, as irrational as it may be, 
It makes psychological sense to our Betty Draper-esque lead, only instead of chain smoking, she sucks down a smorgasbord of inanimate objects, some of which, as the film goes on, become akin to what a witch in a twisted fairy tale would put inside an apple. If there was ever a film to stop you munching on your Moorish popcorn, Swallow is it. Though for any guys out there who've just started dating a girl, this film will let you know if she's got good game with her gag reflex. It's a little like Cronenbergian body horror, only rather than seeing it for ourselves, it's subverted within the confines of our mind's eye, where merely envisioning what havoc these trinkets would wreak upon our insides will be enough to make some viewers want to puke. In some sense, it's as if the movie wants the viewer to become the active component of the body horror it portrays, as our lead girl wolfs down marbles, thumbtacks, batteries and the like. All of which Hunter gulps down as if in hope of divine reward. The ritualistic, almost religious depictions here remind one of communion. The spiritual is awakened for Hunter as she goes through her ritual swallowing routine, as if in atonement for the soul she put a price tag on. In a lot of ways too, the consuming of inanimate objects is symbolic for how she's shaped by the people around her, who have each objectified her in their own way, robbing her of any sense of self. What she's swallowing are the personas, the avatars other people have decided she'll be, how their cold glares have frozen her into a stone-cold statue or sex doll with reproductive capabilities. This is portrayed by Hayley Bennett brilliantly well, where the porcelain-like qualities to her countenance displays itself like an icy lake, where the human underneath is occasionally seen, but only in barely perceptible ripples and the odd, undeniable crack, quickly smoothed and reconcealed over by her next inedible snack. Hunter also collects her consumables like a serial killer with his trophy mementos. If what I've detailed about the film thus far makes you squeamish, imagine just how exactly she's collecting that which she previously consumed. As expected from a movie with such a title, there is a blowjob scene culminating toward a tense climax. Swallowing you can take to be a given, but with what this girl shoves down her throat, it might just end with her hubby getting himself a Prince Albert. Oh! Whilst all of us are thrown into this world outside of our consent, Hunter has to deal with this reality in a way that evokes an even deeper sense of not belonging, for her existence was bred out of that which should have never been. Confronting this deeply embedded belief of having been forced into being, quite literally, adds not only to her character's plight, but reinforces the peculiar habit she adopts, where perhaps she even inadvertently wishes to abort the inanimate entity growing inside her by consuming the inanimate, to garner control over a body she doesn't believe has ever even earned the right to exist. The ending, simple as it is on the surface, acknowledges the role of bathrooms to a female perspective in a way I'd never really considered before. Whilst primarily a place to shed waste, the toilets to a girl, especially within the context of the film, are associated with both the menstrual cycle and the headquarters, or breeding ground, if you will, of eating disorders. Symbolically, this house of bodily fluids, for a lack of a better phrase, represents the cycle of life and death, whilst re-emphasising the importance of personal private autonomy when it comes to their occupiers. Swallow's greatest achievement, to put it somewhat crudely, is how it ends with a sense of relief, having kept in that which shouldn't have been consumed in the first place. And its political message isn't shoved down your throat, which, compared to what Hollywood has shat out over recent years, is a very welcome one. Hello there. This Venus flytrap is one of nature's only meat-eating plants. Let's see what she thinks of a few snacks, shall we? Not smitten with the beef flavour. Nor the bacon flavour once. And now, pepperoni. The succulent, chewy snack made from 100% real meat. <laughs> well, Venus clearly prefers the tangy taste of pepperoni. Well, it is only a snack. Get your teeth into a pepperami. <laughs>